What's going on, y'all, man? It's your man, C. Dr. Critic, man. Yo, it's been a while, watches, man. It's been a while since, you know, I put anything out. Been gone for a while, you know, personal issues, you know, shit here and there, but I'm back to give you, you know, another review with the thing I'm best at, right? And for y'all who watch, you know, who listen to the page, you know, y'all understand that I'm a horror buff, for real. I'm a whore nigga Like that's what I am You know like And I'm also Someone who analyzes Everything About whether it's movies TV Like Some of y'all know this Like I've done other Jordan Peele Movies in the past Like I've reviewed You know us Like even the trailers on us Like You know and I broke it down You know Whether right or wrong My mind always Always is going left and so you know, you know, to bring out, the, you know, come out a little, the months I've been gone, you know, I had to go and do the Candyman trailer review. You know, basically a CDOT theory, you know, and I have, I have a million of them, but off, off really just reviewing the trailer about maybe five times, six times, you know, you know, no pun for it, but. I already got it. You know, I already got basically the plot and I feel like key members to drive the plot home. And let's just get right to it, for real, because it's a CDOT theory, you know. Everybody knows about my CDOT theory watches, you guys know. And at the end of the day, like, I feel like this C... I feel like... First of all, you know, it's a Jordan Peele production. You know, that's what's going on in it. You know, it, it's he's not... He wrote it, you know. I think a lot of people, he's, you know, he's getting the money behind it. But I want to shout out Nina DaCosta, who, she, who he got to direct. You know, what is a classic. You know, this is a big deal. Especially for our community. This is a big deal because this is the, one of the first, if not the first, horror. Us as black people ever related to. An urban legend, you know, from the projects, like, who was a slave. And and, and we know the story, you know, killed, you know, by, by um, slave masters, by white men. And, you know, the honey sawed off his arm, put the hook on it. Like, we know the story. If you tuned in now, you know the story and what's going on with it. But. That's a main part where I feel like this is this is one of those spiritual sequels or a sequel to the original. And if you know anything about the original, I feel like basically this this premise and this plot is moving things forward. But we in the same lane as always. Same lane. So I really think that this my theory is basically the black community and certain people involved. I'll get to that later. But the black community is now in this sequel for Candyman using Candyman for the revenge of basically gentrifying their community. Like, think about it. Like, Candyman was already getting revenge from... You know, himself, just basically for himself. You know, against like basically, you know, whether it's a slave master or white people in general. But that was a revenge type thing, saying his name. And even though anybody could say it and just wasn't white people dying. That was his thing. Like, he was getting revenge on that. Like, I think now when you come into 2020, it's a whole different era. Look at the genius of basically putting like in the trailer when you see, you know, his girlfriend, Anthony's girlfriend, which... We're going to get on that, too, about Anthony. You know, we know that's a little boy, but we know that's a little boy from the first movie. But there are other there are other pieces in this, I feel like, that are not even resolved yet, not even revealed yet. Where it's other people in the, in the, who was in the original movie in this movie. You know what I mean? Like, but let's let's that's a that's a whole different thing. I'm going to get to that later. But it's genius to. When in the trailer we see the girlfriend saying, who would do that? 
and immediately you cut to five white white girls. Well, four white girls and an Asian one, an Asian girl. Basically, anybody other than black people. It's it's a, you know it's a great joke. I love it. But really, it's not even about just only race with this. It's about this is a new era, and we know that in this new era, what it would be, it'd be a Candyman challenge. It'd be niggas saying it in the mirror, like saying Candyman five times in the mirror. Just to do it, just to see. And if it was a real situation, just like how it is in this movie, yo, it'll be millions dead. Let's keep it real. It'll be trending on Twitter. It'll be all on Instagram. It will be millions dead. So I don't know if it's going to go that far to because that would be uncontrolled. That would be crazy. But I think it is bridging the gap to not only the old school with the movie, but the old school of how us as black people went about thinking. Whether it's like, yo, this is slave master, slavery to what's going on in this new generation when it comes to gentrifying. They're gentrifying not only just New York, not only D.C., but it's happening everywhere now. To where we feel it. To where people are getting moved out. Like They're pushing people out. And this is something where it's like us as us as a people, us as a community, it's like, how can we even stop that? How? Like, we really don't have the answer to it at all. So it's like, why not? If we could get a super band to stop that, don't you think you don't you think we would? Don't you think we would? So we see the main, you know, character Anthony, you know. He's an artist. He he he. He obviously comes from the projects and in, in, in the movie, the Chicago projects, you know. But he must not remember it at all because he said he feels connected. It's a little weird. If his name wasn't Anthony, I'd almost think that that wasn't the son at all. That they're throwing us off and it wouldn't even be the son because you feel connected. But maybe it is a symbolism for. He's not from the hood. He's not from the projects. But he still feels connected. This is still his home. So it could be going that route. I feel like that is the smartest route to go where there's a lot of black people not from the hood. It's a lot of black people not from the projects. But they still feel connected because these are our, pe- these are our people. These are our people. So he's going back to research. And at the end of the day... To be honest, when we see that man who he talks to, and this is where I'm going to get to the point with this. When we see that man that he talks to, it looks like, I don't know, it looks like a, he almost looks like a garbage man. He almost looks like the handyman almost, you know, like like the super of the buildings. And now that is gentrified, the community. At the end of the day, who do you think from the original that man could be? Seriously, who do you think, uh, who was around at that time, who played a big part in the Candyman movie, who helped and kind of hurt to a certain extent, sent Helen in the movie. I mean, we all know the boy, little Jakey, man. And no one is talking about that. The one who threw the hook in at the end. He was, he was, a, he, he was a big part of that movie. That's obviously little Jakey stand there, and that's obviously the man. You know, uh, what is the actor's name? Oh man, Coleman Domingo. I feel like it's his name is William Burke in the movie. But little Jakey is that could be a nickname. Doesn't mean his name's Jake. You know, so no one's talking about that. But I think that's a little detail that a lot of people are missing when it comes to the thing they're throwing in the trailer. And I feel like little Jakey. Is the guy, even though he was against Candyman in the in the movie, in the first one, even though the whole community was against Candyman. What's, what's the term that we always say or that you hear a lot? The enemy. What is it? The enemy of my enemy is my friend. At, at the end of the day, little Jakey understands this is getting gentrified. 
a lot of his family, probably friends, were probably kicked out of the projects from, you know, goes back to, you know, the 90s, obviously, when the, when the original Candyman took place. So it's like, the enemy of my enemy is my friend. At the end of the day, there's a bigger enemy going on, and that is the people, I don't want to say white community, but the people who are gentrifying our people and kicking them out. At the end of the day, yo, it's the, it's the, like, we know what that is. So, little Jakey, I feel like, is William. William Burke. That, that is the person who I feel like is not getting any recognition. We're talking about the big surprise of Anthony. We're talking about the big surprise of Vanessa Williams coming back as Anne. Like, we are saying these things, but we're not, it's, it's the su- subtle, it's the crumbs. Not just the loaf of it. Like, we, we're looking at it as a big loaf. We're looking at it even slices. Like, we're slicing it up. We're slicing it down. But when it comes to the crumbs of the trailer, of, of this, why I'm doing this review is, these are the crumbs that are being laid out. That man, William, that super who, and he's talking to him in it. Like, you could tell that he's going to be the one to truly, like, give him details of Candyman. You could tell he's going to be the one. So it's like, I feel like he is the one who's almost spearheading it to where Candyman, look, he, he needs his, he's going through, Anthony's going through almost like a possession. He's going through a transformation. And it just doesn't come from nowhere. It's not just coming from just the Reese, just him going around the projects. Like, even though in the first one, it, it you know, it was kind of like that, but. It has to be a gateway. It has to be a bridge that connects it. Not just Anthony being, you know, who Candyman wanted to take as its as a as almost like as his child. It's not just that. Because at the end of the day, if it was just that, then he would have been turned into this. He would have been became the next Candyman. And I feel like little Jakey, aka well, William, let's just call him that for now. William Burke, you know, aka Little Jakey, that that's what that who truly connects Anthony to the Candyman story. That truly connects Anthony to what happens to transformation and possession we see him go through in front of his girlfriend, in front of everybody. Like he's going through that, and that transformation represents. I feel like it, the connection of I'm not from these projects. I'm not from this, but. It's something we have to do to help our people. It's something we have to do to say basically enough is enough for this. Enough is enough for just kicking our people out. We lived here. We grew up here. And now these companies want to gentrify the whole neighborhood, make all these expensive uh, stores, expensive places, and and expensive high-rises, and then put all the white people in and just kick all of us out. And I feel like this is... The leading of the charge Like Candyman is something That the that the black community And I feel like it's going to be Little Jakey But I feel like the it, it symbolizes the black community Period Taking the lead and taking the charge And to getting revenge Just like how Candyman got revenge or Wanted to get revenge on other people And that's why he became that urban legend You know Not saying it's just going to be white people I'm sure all race is going to die, but that is the symbolism of it. That was the symbolism of it back then. It was revenge on the people who killed him. It's revenge on the people who gentrified these projects. Like, he's the lead, he's going to be the leader of that. Anthony will be the leader of that. But I just don't feel it's going to be Anthony. And, and, and this is where the reach comes. Like, like I said, I feel like it will be a social media frenzy. It will be a social media thing. It will be a Candyman challenge. It could be that. And obviously white people would definitely pick up on it, but all races would pick up on it. But it's going to spread. It's going to spread into a mass hysteria, into mass basically killings. And with that, like I said, I feel like it is going to be, we have, we have the Helen situation. But we know Helen is going to be in the movie. We know Helen's going to be in the movie. And let's see, keep it real, if it's a sequel, she was dead. She was an entity as well, just like Candyman. And, and saying her name, Helen, five times, 
Like she comes out. What is that for? We we really don't know that yet. But that could be the help that we as a community need because if we want to keep it, look, we double down black. I, I go by that. Double down black, but at the end of the day, we always need help to move forward. We've always had help in history to move forward. And a lot of times it came from, didn't come from us. It didn't come from people of our color. I don't know if that's our role. Just it, It's too quick of a snippet to say that's our role from the trailer. But I know... F- just watch, just just follow me, watches. <laughs> I, I know I've been going for a while, but just follow me, watches. At the end of the day, Anthony, who's supposed to be the next Candyman, I feel like at the end, I feel like for my seat out theory, for this review of Candyman 2020, even though he's gonna be the new Candyman, even though he's going to the possession of it, even though he's going through this transformation of it. It is not him who really wanted this fight, obviously. I feel like it was the community. And it could, I don't think it's his mom who wants it as well, but the community, aka that man who I feel like is little Jakey, um, other people involved. I feel like even it could be another entity, other entities that just not don't have, that don't have the hook, but other entities involved. We already have Helen. It could be, it could even be, not saying it, but the other characters involved, whether it's his girlfriend, who knows with that. It's still too early to tell, but the main plot premise breakthrough, I feel like I have. I feel like that is it. I'm 90 on this, y'all. For real, I'm 90 on this. The premise, I feel like that is true to this story, is that the black community And people are going to be using Candyman and this entity and this force for the revenge on gentrification, gentrifying not only their community, not only the Chicago projects, but, you know, probably, probably next stop, you know, the whole United States. So, look, man, it's the first time I've been back in a while. You know, I love horror. You know, Jordan Peele's doing his thing, you know. Nina DaCosta, like, I hope she does a great job, you know. Jordan Peele wrote it, and when it comes to his social horrors and how he has been doing things, this is the perfect premise for him to step out on and and try to rebrand the Candyman name into this new era of 2020. So, you know, man, this is your man, see that the critic here. Like, you know, I'm watches, man. It's been a long time. I missed y'all, man. Like, horror fans, like, Candyman fans, you know, everyone involved, like, tell me what you think. You know, that's what the watches are, is to tell me your ideas, your theories. Like, last time when I did the Jordan Peele, um, us situation, it was a lot of, you know, a lot of talk in my comments, a lot of, yo, rev it up, man. Rev it up. Of course, like and subscribe, but I want to hear your feedback on this in the comments, for real. That's the main thing I want to hear. What you think about this? You know, and I'm going to have something else coming with this. Trust me. I have a Critic Chronicles situation where I'm breaking everything down when, as, as it gets further to June 12th when I believe it's about to be coming out. So, till then, you know, I'll, I'll have other... I'm, I'm, I'll be back. I'm back with it. I'm back to making videos, you know. Uh, I seen the uh, Saw trailer coming out and I, I already pinpointed that one, I feel like, too. I feel like I pinpointed that one too, but I'm not gonna. That's for the next video. But this one, Candyman 2020, man, Jordan Peele, respect. You know, Nina DaCosta, respect. Like, hopefully, you do guys do a great job. But this is the premise, man. This is the one, and 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 I know no one's gonna think of this right from the rip. But as soon as I saw this trailer, about a good five times, that's the first thing that came to my mind for real. So. Yo, until next time, man. Watch us, man. Watch us. Keep watching. I'm back now.